Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's digital platform. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Friends, uh, these days you must have uh, seen these pictures uh, that are doing the rounds on the internet and these uh, black and white pictures uh, where people are seen wearing masks. Now these pictures belong to the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. So I thought it was worthwhile to actually compare the two pandemics and see if uh, there are any differences, if there are any similarities and if uh, yes, then can any lessons really be learned from them. So let us dwell more on the topic. Let us uh, first try to know about the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. First point is, uh, did it ravage the world uh, from 1918 to 1919? Second point is, it was a pandemic that was a global epidemic and it killed 50 to 100 million people in the entire world. Third point is, it did not originate from Spain. Um, the name is Spanish flu, so one might think that it originated from Spain, but that was not the case. Actually, scientists still uh, cannot pinpoint the exact location, the exact place from which uh, the flu originated. But uh, since Spanish media was reporting uh, extensively at that time, uh, it was the free media, and that is how it got the name of Spanish flu. Third point is that it hit the countries that were already ravaged by uh, First World War. As a result, it uh, spread in uh, army camps and hospitals and it uh, ravaged uh, Europe and then uh, spread to the entire world. And India was also not uh, spared. In India, also 17 to 18 million uh, people were killed and 6% uh, uh, of India's population died because of uh, this Spanish flu. So, what are the similarities between uh, the Spanish flu of 1918 and the present coronavirus uh, pandemic? Of course, there are similarities that one can see. First is animal source. As you all know that uh, the present uh, coronavirus pandemic has been uh, uh, sourced to an animal uh, from a wild market in Wuhan. So, uh, and that uh, time also, uh, the virus uh, was supposed to start from an or animal origin. Which animal we don't know, probably a bird, but at the moment we don't know. Second is both are respiratory infection. Of course, uh, both are affecting the respiratory tract and they have common symptoms like running nose, so fevers, aches. So these, were, these are the common symptoms. Thro uh, next point is the spread. Of course, uh, the spread is very quick uh, of uh, both the infections. In fact, uh, the Spanish flu affected infected about one third of the entire world's population. And last is a droplet infection. It's a, uh, of course, we do know that it uh, spreads through nose, mouth, eyes, and the spread of infection is through droplets. However, there are major points of differences between the two pandemics as well. First difference is uh, about the two viruses. Uh, the present is, of course, the coronavirus and uh, the Spanish flu of 1918 was caused by the influenza virus. And uh, there is a second difference on uh, the virus being uh, more threatening to different age groups. Uh, the influenza virus was more threatening to the young people at that time. But, uh, of course, uh, this time we know that coronavirus uh, is more th threatening towards the elderly people and the people who already have existing medical conditions. And there was of course a difference in the, the level of knowledge. Those times uh, people did not know anything about uh, influenza virus uh, and so it was impossible to actually develop a vaccine uh, for it. Uh, in fact, scientists were able to isolate the uh, influenza virus only uh, later in 1933. And, uh, but of course, we do know that uh, we do know much more about coronavirus. Uh, we have mapped the genetic material of coronavirus and of course, there is a promise of uh, antiviral drugs and also uh, a vaccine being developed. Then uh, there is a difference between uh, the then and now as far as measures are adopted or what we call as response uh, to the pandemic. Uh, of course, this all comes down to historical timing. Uh, because at that time, there would, uh, that was the period post the World War and uh, the disease was actually spreading uh, with the movement of troops from one country to the other. But we do know at this time, uh, several countries have imposed lockdowns and travel restrictions are also in place. So these uh, points are making all the difference as far as the two pandemics are concerned. So how did uh, the Spanish flu of 1918 end? Well, it subsided uh, by the summer of 1919 and those infected either died or developed immunity towards it. 
50 to 100 million people worldwide, as I told you, died at that time. And at that time, several countries uh, imposed quarantine measures. Uh, people were advised to wear masks, avoid shaking hands, stay indoors. And India also bore a brunt of uh, the epidemic, the pandemic. Uh, there were huge burden of deaths in India as well. 17 to 18 million Indians died as well. In India, uh, the, the flu struck uh, through uh, the ship of returning soldiers uh, that docked in uh, Bombay in June 1918. That, that's how the uh, epidemic started uh, in India. And then there was a second wave of epidemic in India in September of that year in south of the country and it spread along the coastlines. And uh, at that time, workers uh, stayed away from uh, their uh, workplaces, factories, uh, newspapers advised people to stay at home, uh, to get nutritious food, get enough exercise, but stay away from overcrowded places. But uh, the colonial authorities were absolutely ill-equipped uh, to deal with the disaster of this massive scale and as now India our country is a face facing another deadly infection of course the government of India has uh, imposed a lockdown it has acted swiftly but one thing is very clear that civilians will play a very important role in limiting the spread of the disease so I hope uh, I was able to clear some of your doubts about uh, the Spanish flu of uh, 1918 and uh, now you have a fair bit of idea about the pandemic at that time when you see these pictures that are doing the rounds on the internet. Thanks so much for watching.